Now when it comes to that selector shaft, keep in mind we're trying to line up a roll pin with this hole. Bad thing is that the rain sensor is going to be covering this up, so you're not going to be able to see it. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint a line down this shaft itself, so that when we put the rain sensor up, we know about where to line the roll pin with, and then that way it'll be a lot easier to install it. So go ahead and clean this surface off and get you something to paint it with. So go ahead and grab your rag and wipe off that shaft so that we don't have any excess transmission fluid or anything that will prevent the paint from actually sticking to it and drying. You could probably get away with using a permanent marker. In this case, I've got a yellow marker I'm gonna be using to just paint a line on there for reference only. So when I'm lining it up, I know about where it's gonna be and go all the way down the shaft as far as you can get. And now I've got something that will actually protrude below the rain sensor to give me an idea of where that hole is going to be for the roll pin to line up with. So at this point we can go ahead and pick up on that selector shaft and make sure we get plenty of room to sit the rain sensor down in there. So now we've got that replacement rain sensor ready to be installed. As you can see here, parking linkage is in place as well as the roll pin has been pre-installed. Now one thing I didn't show you before was where this linkage goes. This piston or plunger goes into a hole right here. So that will get inserted and at the same time like we mentioned before, this pin right here that goes to a valve on the valve body has to go in this groove. Once we get those in, then we can drop that selector shaft back through the center of the rain sensor and go ahead and reinstall that T10 Torx. So go ahead and grab the assembly drop the parking mechanism down in its hole, and go ahead and line up the pin on that valve for the valve body. At the same time, I can grab that selector shaft and wiggle it down until it starts going through the rain sensor. Now we've got that in place. Now it's a matter of lining it up and knocking the roll pin through. But like I said, before we do that, we'll go ahead and put that T10 back in place so that selector shaft don't go up and down. Now if that selector shaft fully bottomed out, we can go ahead and put the T10 bolt back in place and start running it down by hand. And if we need to, a ratchet as well. Now the torque on this is actually 10 inch pounds, 10 inch pounds on this. Technically you could just snug it down and be fine, but if you want a torque spec, it's 10 inch pounds. So at this point we'll grab that rain sensor and make sure that, that pins and that cutout on the right side and wiggle it up till it's all the way up against the valve body. Now at this point what we can do is we can start rotating that selector shaft and eventually you'll see that yellow mark that I put on there. And there it is. And once I get it lined up, I can go back and forth so you can see it right there. I'll line it up with the roll pin and being that we've got the rain sensor as high as we can get it, we can now tap on that roll pin and everything should line up easily. So the key is to lift up on the rain sensor and also find your mark that you put on there. At that point, you'll be real close to lining it up and that point on that roll pin will find the hole and guide it the rest of the way. Grab that roll pin punch, let that ball sit into the cutout on the end and just start tapping on it. And as you can see, it's already started lining up, so we're just going to go till we're flush. And there you have it. So now the rain sensor's in place, the selector shaft's installed, the roll pin's been knocked through. There's two more things. We've got the electrical connector that we need to plug in. Make sure it's fully seated and snapped in. And then we've also got that detent with the roller on it that I showed you earlier that goes into this cutout here that we mentioned before that this little bent angle needs to be on the outside of the valve body and that T25 Torx that we need to tighten down as well. So go ahead and grab that detent and get the roller in the cutout right here on that rain sensor and get it close to the edge. 
get that T25 and put it up in here. Now the torque on this T25 is gonna be 50 inch pounds. 50 inch pounds. I wanna run it down with a quarter inch electric ratchet for now, and you can come back and torque it down to 50 inch pounds. As you go down, the hole that's around here will center up with the bolt, so don't be worried about that. You don't have to apply no force. It will work its way around. And there you have it. We've got the range sensor installed. Now, as I said before, the service information states you've got to take the valve body off. You clearly saw that it wasn't needed. You didn't have to mess with the bolts on this, taking this off, fighting with the tubes that go from the valve body to the compounder assembly. You didn't have to deal with none of that. It was fairly simple once you knocked the roll pin through. So don't worry about taking the valve body off if that's what the instructions tell you to do in your service information. Now all we got to do now is actually reinstall the main pan. And as I showed you before, if you were doing a trans service and you took the bottom pan off, we need to replace the filter and reseal that pan and reinstall it as well. So let's go ahead and clean off the side cover and go ahead and get this one back in place. Now when it comes time to cleaning the transmission side covers or the transmission pan, the procedure is pretty much the same. We've got some stamped steel covers that are held in place with RTV and bolts. So it's just a matter of getting that excess old RTV off. You've always got some that kind of bubble up on the outside edge. So usually I start with the inner edge, do the outer edge, and then I'll clean the main contact area that the bead of RTV is going to be applied to. Now, I don't feel the need to ever use abrasive wheels or take it over to a wire brush uh, grinder and actually go down to bare metal. I've learned that just cleaning all the old off and getting a nice smooth surface is all you need to do because you're getting ready to put more RTV right back on it. So you can scrape the outer edge with a flat pointed putty knife, basically the same thing we used to break it loose earlier. And then I like to follow up with a razor blade. And I've got a way that I just scrape across it and it gets all the excess off. And then I hit it with some brake clean and apply a new bead. So grab your putty knife that's got a sharp end on it. Find a corner and just start working your way around. And as you go, it will start raising up the little excess pieces of RTV. And you'll end up with strands such as this. So we're just going to repeat this procedure all the way around. Let's grab your rag and go around the outside edge and kind of peel off any excess pieces that may be hanging on. As long as everything looks good, we can go ahead and hit it with a brake clean and get it ready for a new bead of RTV. So at this point, you go ahead and grab your rag, wipe down all the excess brake cleaner, get any kind of puddles out of the way. This way it will evaporate faster. Now the surface has been wiped clean again, and now we're ready for the RTV. Now find your starting point and go around the edge. Give you a nice little bead when you come to a circle where a bolt hole is going to be. Continue around. You can come back in a second and fill that gap in. But keep one nice little continuous bead all the way around. And then once you're done, you can come back and fill in the gaps. So we'll continue this all the way around the pan. So at this point we're ready to grab the pan that has that bead of RTV around it and go ahead and install it on the transmission. Now 
Now the bolts all the way around the perimeter, both the 10 millimeter studs and the eight millimeters are gonna be 50 inch pounds. That's 50 inch pounds around the transmission cover here. Also, if you've got the pan off on the bottom, that's 50 inch pounds as well. Now, if you can't remember where those 10 millimeter studs went, grab that insulated cover that was on the outside and look for the holes. We've got one here, got one here, and we got one here. So that's where they need to go on the transmission pan. So install those three. Once you're done, install the rest, which are the eight millimeters. So at this point, we're ready to install the insulated cover. All we gotta do is guide it over the dipstick tube, work its way down, and also around the connector for the transmission's valve body. Now, if you remember in the beginning, we had to cut the three clips off that held that insulated cover to those three 10 millimeter studs. Now we don't have the clips to go back with to hold it in place, but I told you I had a solution for that. Well, let me show you. So this is the solution I came up with. What you're gonna need is some six millimeter by 1.0 nuts and six millimeter washers. We'll slide the washers on, then tighten up the nuts. That way we can take it off in the future if we ever need to, and we don't have to use any of those clips that we had to cut off. So there is a way to actually reattach that insulated cover. So just install the washer and then your six millimeter by 1.0 nut, and then tighten it down. At this point, we're ready to install the trans lines. Just make sure that they're fully seated and that the snap ring locks into place. Once it does, slide the plastic cover over it. Grab your other one, do the same thing. You may have to wiggle it or apply a little bit of grease to the tip so that it seats in there properly. Latched in place, slide the cover over, and there you have it, trans lines installed. The final steps in the procedure are to add transmission fluid and to check the fluid level. But that's gonna be coming up in a future video, so make sure to check that out. Because in that video, I'm gonna show you what you need to do to add the fluid and also what you can use already on the vehicle to check the fluid with. So in the meantime, if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up on YouTube. Don't forget you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also, if you got any comments about what you saw in today's video or anything Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, or Ram related, you can always email me at david at MotorCityMechanic.com. If this is the first time you've seen one of my videos, please make sure to hit the subscribe button. Also, click on the bell icon. That way you get notified instantly when videos such as this get uploaded. Last but not least, if you shop on Amazon, please feel free to use the link that's in the description below this video. Any purchases that you make, will help support this channel. Once again, everybody, thanks for checking out all these videos.